Jean Arnold, welcome at Florence School of Regulation and thank you for taking the time for this interview. First of all, congratulations with your energy infrastructure package. This interview is timely because the new regulation on trans-European energy networks has just been published, completing a process that started, as I understand, with the Priority Interconnection Plan in January 2007, uh, then followed by a green paper on energy networks in November 2008, and eventually a legislative proposal in October 2011, which has already been agreed upon after one year by the Council and the European Parliament. So which part of the proposal will, according to you, have the biggest impact and why? Well, I think the, the, the main impact is um, that it will change the way uh, infrastructures are developed in Europe. And that is, I believe, the revolutionary part of, the, uh, of this regulation. Because beyond the specific provisions, you need to see that the member states who usually consider themselves as the main uh, promoter of infrastructure or the main decision maker for infrastructure in spite of project promoters and things like that because at the end member states also according to the treaty have a veto right on any infrastructure on their territory. And what is truly revolutionary here is that member states have accepted to discuss their own infrastructure on their territory together with the neighbors to see what is the general impact of the infrastructure on the wider uh, territory and uh, on the European scale. And um, that is where uh, the identification of projects of common interest uh, being done by regional groups which are looking at the projects in a multilateral, multinational way is really a major step forward in the Europeanization of the energy policy. And um, it's quite clear that uh, from now on, infrastructure will be seen by looking at the European map and not just looking at your own territory. This is a major change. And it makes sense, I think, in infrastructures is something which is, of course, uh, looking at the, the territory which today is the European Union and not anymore the, the, the national borders. National borders have disappeared largely, uh, and, um, but it was not true for any infrastructure which is crossing a border. It was still big problems, two different systems and uh, different authorities to be involved. So here the, 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 the approach is to say, OK, you agree together on these projects and you will ensure that it is developed simultaneously and that the authorities concerned will work together and the regulators will set the rules for these uh, infrastructure together and so on. So this is, in my view, the main uh, novelty in, uh, in this um, regulation. And this is uh, not novel only for energy. It may really set an example for other infrastructures like uh, transport, where they are still discussing the single sky, for instance, or for railways. Uh, or uh, for uh, telecommunication. So I believe this is very important and of course we hope that these regional groups will continue to work. Uh, remember they are made of member states representatives, regulators, TSOs and the Commission and also possible stakeholders to ensure that really all the aspects uh, have been uh, looked at so that the list of projects of common interest is really the list of projects we need to integrate this uh, European market. And if you would look at this achievement in, in historical context, um, is this another step into in a long process or how would you see that? Yes, I think it's, a, as for everything in the European uh, construction, it's a step-by-step -step approach. You are doing what is feasible and what is acceptable for all the people concerned. And um, so it's very interesting to see that the trans-European network policy, which is the infrastructure policy of the European Union, has been introduced in the Maastricht Treaty in uh, 1993, just 20 years ago, as already a result of the single market uh, completion which had to be done by 1992 
I remember. So, uh, in the field of energy and all network industries, it has been very difficult because, look, the regulatory framework has been developed well after 92. In energy, like in railways and like in other network industry where it was based on state-owned companies with monopolies and um, so it was very difficult to get across these uh, obstacles to really uh, ensure the European perspective and um, now we have it and uh, I think it's a major achievement uh, for Europe and it will bring a lot of benefits because it will also should lead to uh, optimization of the resources in, in the energy sector. It should um, lead to more efficiency. It should lead to uh, really bring the sun where it is and the wind where it is uh, to everybody in the best possible way. And um, in my view, uh, that is uh, really a major progress. The risk is now that um, uh, Indeed, uh, there is, uh, the regulation says that the list of projects of common interest has to be decided by the Commission by 30 September uh, this year. And um, the risk is that uh, uh, member states are coming back to the old reflex, saying, oh, I need to push this infrastructure without taking into account all the work which has been done already in the regional groups to ensure a consensus of all the stakeholders and uh, we will see in the next weeks uh, how this is working uh, but it's a bit the acid test of the uh, implementation of the regulation in the coming months and I very much hope that uh, uh, the, the process which has been uh, uh, agreed there will be uh, followed and um, member states will also put in place the one-stop shop to facilitate the permit granting. Regulators will work together and that um, we will really see the difference in the coming uh, uh, months so that we have really all the right infrastructures uh, to uh, be put in place for making this uh, energy market working in favour of citizens and the business uh, in Europe. Thank you for this interview, Jean-Arnold. You're welcome. <laughs>